Because they said, what happened to Saruman? Buy the extended DVD. <laughs> I've been fascinated with the distinctions between films with numerous cuts for a while now. Some extended editions simply reinsert deleted scenes into it, whilst others reshape the overall structure of the experience to make for interesting discussions on which one tells the same story better. After seeing the theatrical versions of the Lord of the Rings trilogy in cinemas over a year ago with my initial exposure to these films being the extended, I found myself looking up people's opinions on which version of this epic series they prefer. And I couldn't find a consensus. A lot of hardcore Tolkien fans will tell you the more there is to the story the better, whilst others would much rather have the tighter pacing from their original release. Since my experience of seeing these movies on the big screen, I've developed a newfound love for them and wanted to determine my verdict on this matter. This is coming from someone who hasn't read the books and is simply examining which versions are more enthralling to watch based on the impact of the inclusions or exclusions of these scenes. So let's get to it. Now the challenge of doing a comparison like this is determining if I'd feel the way I do about certain aspects if I wasn't aware there were any other versions of these films. Because while my favourite thing about both cuts of Fellowship of the Ring is how it gradually expands our view and overall scope of Middle Earth, I do notice I find the early Shire scenes go by a little too quickly in the theatrical. Looking at how the second half is paced, it zips by in comparison and doesn't feel quite as impactful as it should. Now to be fair, in context of release when no one knew for certain the trilogy would be as successful as it was, it makes sense for them to get to the epic sweeping fantasy stuff as soon as possible, and about the time of Rivendell, a wonderfully engrossing groove of pacing is found. But like any good RPG, the introductory time spent in the idyllic hometown is there to make the moment adventure calls all the more meaningful, and this lacks a bit of breathing room to be 100% effective. Again, it's hard to say how much of this stems from knowing an extended version exists, but when you compare just how this one conversation is edited differently between cuts, there's a slight yet significant difference which makes the original version come off as rushed. Half the shy has been invited. Who addresses me? He's up to something. Mm -hmm. All right, then keep your secrets. He's up to something. Mm -hmm. All right, then keep your secrets. Good. Unsurprisingly, I really appreciate the extra time the extended cut spends in the Shire, along with the framing device of Bilbo writing his book. If nothing else, it's a great testament to Tolkien's world building to have the narration about the One Ring followed by the description of who hobbits are, both equally detailed. Because this entry is so much about establishing Middle-earth and the Fellowship before they split into separate groups, a lot of the extra time here, even if it doesn't always advance the story, really bolsters the sense of immersion which makes the movie special. Now where Peter Jackson made the extended versions for the fans who wanted as much content as possible, I'll admit there are a few bits here and there which could have easily remained cut, and that one scene in between the elves catching the Fellowship and taking them to Lothlorien where it goes from sunset to night to sunset again does feel rather clunkily wedged in. But for the most part, the additional content enhances the charm, intrigue and wonder of this world tenfold. Plus, while most of the characterization is very well done in the theatrical, someone like Boromir greatly benefits from the extra motivation and development given here. So yeah, it's pretty clear I prefer the extended cut overall here, but the next two films differ with their cross-cutting between storylines and greater emphasis on action, so they feature a very different, albeit no less effective, style of pacing. And in the case of the middle chapter where the least naturally happens, it's a pace which lends itself very well to a shorter length. 
The Two Towers is my least favourite of the trilogy overall, but I have little issue with the theatrical version. It moves along nicely, and unlike the other two, I couldn't remember any scenes from the extended version prior to my rewatch of the extended, which says to me the right, necessary scenes were kept in the original release. So, with that said, a lot of the extended scenes are good, like Gandalf asking about Frodo and the Gondor flashback, which adds a lot to the whole trilogy, and they don't disrupt the flow per se, but most of them feel redundant, not adding a lot the theatrical didn't convey already. The theatrical versions of this and Return of the King build momentum really well with everything already established from Fellowship, so the addition of more little scenes aren't as impactful as they were in Fellowship. Like, Merry and Pippin's shenanigans with the tree water is fine, but absolutely feels like it should just be a deleted scene, and all the extra bits at the very end dampen the impact of the poignant note the theatrical ends on. The scenes are mostly rather enjoyable, but for as much as I do like that Gondor flashback, I'm quite content losing it for the tighter, more satisfying package. As for Return of the King, let's cut straight to the Oliphant in the room. I couldn't believe what I saw, because I wasn't in it. <laughs> yeah, so Saruman's exclusion is a bit disappointing because he was such a big part of the first two, and I always felt it was better to keep his one scene in. That is, until I re-watched the extended cut. While his death is pretty cool, the rest of the scene is honestly a bit cheesy in my opinion. It feels like Saruman is bullying the other characters more than anything. This exile crept from the shadows will never be crowned king. <laughs> The extended edition of Return of the King is exactly why I'm so interested in comparing different cuts of films. The theatrical cut is easily my favourite Best Picture winner and one of my favourite films in general, while the extended… isn't. Not only are many of the new editions similarly redundant like its predecessor, but some are very corny and unlike Two Towers, their inclusions are actively detrimental to the pacing. A lot of the intrigue and anticipation is gone from this version, and the longer length just mucks up the momentum to where a lot of the emotional impact of the theatrical is lost. I understand the appeal of the longer versions giving more detail and character work from the books, but this just feels way too bloated with unnecessary additions. There's no need for a scene of Frodo explaining he doesn't think there'll be a journey home, because the look he gives early on in both cuts says it already. I'm surprised to say this is the only extended version I would rate lower than its theatrical counterpart. <sighs> well, there you have it. This was an incredibly interesting critical endeavour with some very surprising outcomes, and I'd highly recommend watching both editions with an open mind to discover your own verdict, especially if you've clung to a specific cut whilst automatically dismissing the other. You might just be pleasantly surprised at what you discover.